first of all, let's talk a little bit about being an intuitive listener. And what does that mean as a real estate agent when you're helping clients? How do you become, how do you know when to listen and when to speak? Welcome to the Jennifer J. Hammond Podcast. Jennifer is a licensed realtor, educator, speaker, and best-selling author. Jennifer's goal is to help you find your yay in every day. Hello, 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 hello. This is Jennifer J. Hammond. And I'm so excited. We have Nancy Orland Weber here today. Oh, boy, are we going to have fun. We have such an exciting, I want to say a topic you probably haven't really thought about before. And it's really in the business of being a real estate agent and and selling homes and, and helping people buy homes. It's really important to be an intuitive listener. So first of all, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. I'm so happy to be with you. <laughs> Yay. I'm so happy for you to be here. Yay! And I want I want you to talk a little bit about so and we should first of all, let's talk a little bit about being an intuitive listener. And sure. what does that mean as a real estate agent when you're helping clients? How do you become how do you know how, when to listen and when to speak? Thank you. I would say It's a full-time job, not just as a realtor, but developing the ability to differentiate and the commitment to put that fear on the side. So if the priority is, I have to make that sale, you're not an intuitive listener. An intuitive listener listens inside, but not to the fear, and they have to know the difference. They're also an intuitive listener successfully I mean, really successful. I don't care what field, but in reality, I've had enough of incredible experiences with realtors. If the money is the number that stays in your head more than open-hearted listening to the other person and their need, you'll never find the right house for them. I, I can write that as a guarantee. So an intuitive listener learns, and it's a learned art if you don't do it automatically and don't know how. If you're anxious at all, and it's easy in today's world, and the market going and suddenly the interest rates are going up, et cetera. So can I still sell the house? Or blah, 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 right? And it depends on where and what. And we don't know day to day now. This is a different world. And so the intuitive listener One of the tips I give people, if you want to be a real intuitive listener, two things. One, keep developing for real. And it'll sound ridiculous, but it works. Pretend you have an incredible, wise voice overlooking everything inside your mind. It loves you unconditionally. And so when you say, is this my fear driving me? No. Are you sure? I mean... It sounds like, and I ran a psych unit, so I know this is not crazy. (laughs) I can tell you this is not. This is differentiating between the voices, the edited voices, the finger in the face that you got sometime before, the shame you felt. All of that goes into, are you going to be successful or are you not in the moment, in that sale? Not in all of them. It is a continual buildup and release so that the voice in your head is louder in unconditional going, you rock lady, you rock guy, you don't have to worry about a thing. Listen with your heart to them and you will find the exact thing they need as two of my realtors did for me, two different ones. And let me tell you, it wasn't easy what I told them to get. So they were intuitive listeners as you are, Jennifer. And that's success. So that's the first part I would suggest. And there's more. The Thank second, you. Right, I would say the second tip, for real, keep a journal. Keep a mm. journal. Uh, look, I know a lot of people don't like to write. Some love to write. But if you kept a journal that's the right kind of journal look for you, the right kind of writing stick, <laughs> crayons, <laughs> which was really a lot. Of and it yeah. isn't about my feelings. That's not what I'm saying. If you want to differentiate between being an intuitive listener and letting your fear drive your life, drive your car, would you let fear drive your car? No. Would you let fear make <laughs> you about husbands, about partners in life, about any friendship, 
anything. No. So in two and months- you, and you to interrupt you just for a second, that reminds me of the movie Groundhog Day when they take the groundhog and he puts it up and he says, "Don't drive angry. Don't drive angry." And it just makes me realize how important that really is with everything that you're doing that you're not coming from a place of anger or fear that's so low toned and it's just not where you want to be. Exactly. So when you do the journal for intuitive listening specifically, if you have something you think is intuitive about them, that that business, strictly the business journal, right? You write it in it, and you write the date, you write all the details down of what you think they're about. And your intuition tells you about what they would want. Just keep a journal, a log of it. Then go ahead and do the work and forget everything. Just go ahead, put everything aside. By the way, if while you're doing this, you get anxious, you get frightened. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I don't like them particularly. Oh, God, they're a pain. Anything. Put all of that. Make some kind of vision for yourself. Put it all in a bag. Stick that bag into the garbage pail. You could always go back into the garbage pail if you want it. And go ahead and just do the work. If it turns out that what you wrote is accurate, you're going to give yourself a reward besides a commission. Ah, I love it. it. Celebrate. Celebrate. I have goosebumps. So celebration of your intuition is something people don't understand enough because that's how you feed it. That's how you tell it. Yeah, that's where I want to be. That's exactly where I want to be every time. And let me tell you, as as somebody who has asked dozens and hundreds of times, how do I get to work with police? Because I see things and I go, I can't tell you how to work with them. Well, how did you get there? I said, they came to me because it's the same thing with reality, right? You have a vision as a person wanting a home, no matter who. And so the next part, well, wait, wait, wait. Before we go there, I want to, since you brought it up, I want to take everybody on a little a little journey about your life. I know you had attempted murder. You were an attempted murder victim when you were pregnant um, by your first husband. And talk a little bit about how that ended up turning into oh. um, a psychic detec- detective for over 42 years and the author of Life of a Psychic Detective, the book that's sitting next to you. Tell us a little bit about that story. It's pretty simple. I think everybody has trauma in the past. It's how you cope with your trauma, period. So I immediately, I was a, pardon me for the phrase, and some of you may not know what it means, a goody two shoes. I never said no to anybody ever. And it got me terrible stuff and terrible traumas. And then, right. And I was pregnant. I understand. I know you do. (laughs) So when he tried to murder me, I thought he did because I slumped down, pretended I was dead. When I stood up 10 minutes later, and he was casually drinking something in the kitchen, I got into my fierceness for the first time. Mm. And let me tell you, if you use anger effectively, Mother Teresa did, Jesus did, Moses did. Mm. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of what Gandhi did. Look around. The anger is effective only when it's for the good of all and ethical. So angry at losing a sale is not having any integrity. You're going to, you want it in written guarantee, you will lose sales. I have lost so many things happening along the way, but that's what led me to seek justice for others. And that's just one of the things I work with. I work with everything and anything, but I was fortunate to meet some incredible people along the way. And, Beautiful. Oh, yeah. I think we all, you know, you, and that's what you're pointing out, Jennifer, because the triggers we all have, and if you allow them to guard that sale for you, kiss it goodbye. Right. So as we're helping realtors understand how to not only be intuitive listeners, but really be the best real estate agent for that specific time for those clients, whether it's one client or two clients. And it's always what's happening right now. And I think being fully present is also a gift that you have as well. That is something that I would love to help you, if you could expand a little bit on how can a real estate agent really be present for what's happening now? 
uh, for their clients. Everyone who listens to this, I want you to do one thing. Put it on pause for a moment. And Jennifer, you can go ahead and do it yourself. I want you to write down your top three priorities. What's your top mm. three off the top of your head, Jennifer? What are your top mm. three? Yeah. Oh, mine are very easy. I Number one, I always want to help people. So it's very easy for me because I bring, I have so much happiness. So number two is bringing joy and happiness, really helping people find their yay in every day. But also you probably have heard me say that I believe in education, empowerment, and inspiration. So my tagline that I say very often are truly my three top priorities as well. But in, and I, I weave those all together and the fact that the bottom line is, as long as I know I'm helping somebody, then I know that I am on my life purpose. Okay. So if everyone thinks of their top three priorities in regards to their own success in life, now, how much time do you spend feeling that and doing that? And, and that needs to be a lot. Be present in the moment. If you're not following your own heart's priority, you're not in the moment. It's that simple. Yes. And so, you know, you you were talking, Jennifer, to a shy introvert who became very outspoken. Uh, they used to call it the hot seat when they'd sit opposite me as clients. Yeah. They still do sometimes. And they know I can go in your face fast. And the reason I do that is bring that soul out. What are you hiding it for? That's your light yeah. shining. And so stop doing that. The world needs you. So when you're giving people, and I want everyone who is in realty when they're looking, just consider the outcome. If you're giving them the best of you and you're finding something that truly is for them because you're listening to them beautifully, your soul really cares. Do you know what kind of rippling effect that can have on thousands mm. and thousands of people they know when they move? You, you have to recognize how my first realtor, I mean, she thought it's a good thing she didn't think I was totally crazy. I mean, no, really, because I had a vision of where it was and what in a new state. Mm. I told her everything about it. And she said, honey, I know you think, don't worry about it. She said, I will find it. And it's okay. And she did. And that's how I started working with the police in that town. And that's how I helped solve a, a massive, uh, one of the cops is in prison for life. I was instrumental mm. in that. Absolutely instrumental. Uh, I, they were the ones I worked with serial killers, murderers to start with so come on find them the right house that is so perfect for them and the love they will give you back even if they never see you again it's real and so my other comment about that do you believe if you have any philosophy or religion or spiritual purpose or whatever that that's important in life and that's really more than your form because this is your temporary house while we're here so if you have any belief about that at all, then you believe in karma. Then you believe in the rippling effect of the power of love being more than the power of the money you make on it. I've seen very wealthy people jingle the change in their pockets because they're frightened and others be as generous as they can be. It doesn't matter about how much. It matters about how much heart goes into it. Absolutely. I think you should always lead with your heart. And that's a perfect place to put. So if people want to find out about your book, your website, um, how can they get in touch with you? My name. I'm on social media as Nancy Allen Weber. I have a fan side, apparently. Somebody from Denmark made for me. And uh, my website is nancyallenweber.com. My name. <laughs> it's my brand. And it's my purpose. Uh, I always say my name is not Mrs. Weber or Miss Weber or any other name. I've been married three times. Uh, I said my name before that. And when I was a nurse and a supervisor and an administrator, my name is Nancy. That's what I like to be known as because that means I'm your friend. Exactly. Well, thank you, Nancy. And as you know, I would like for you to lift your voice and say yay with me as we go off the air. Would you do that? Love it. Perfect. Three, two, one. Yeah.